it and um, taking us through. This meeting is being recorded. So yeah, thanks, thanks, Asa, uh, and thanks everyone else who's joining us today. We'll also be live streaming this session through uh, some of the groups, and um, hopefully you all will learn from this and can use it for uh, UX writing or for any communication purposes or even just general communication or understanding how brands communicate and how they get people to um, you know buy brands and buy their brand. So that's uh, one of the things which is uh, which you will learn as well. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. Uh, over to you, Asa. Uh, please. I think he just dropped the call. Uh, hold on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Asa is. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Asa is uh, our UX writer from the Lazada Design Studio team and based in Indonesia and does uh, UX writing in English and also. Um, in uh, Bahasa for the team. And um, so um, over to you, Asa, to take us through this uh, interesting session. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Asa Mokias. You can call me Asa, just like Sanchita said. I'm from the UX writer team. So I joined Lazada in 2020, just, just right after the pandemic. So it's been two years here. Uh, as before we start, I can't see you guys. So my, my, my screen is just black. So I actually asked Harris to help me with the screen. So, uh, so can we start? Yes, uh, Harris is, uh, as whenever you have, uh, you have to move a screen, just let Harris know and he's already doing that. He's already sharing screen. Okay, so, okay, move on to the second screen, uh, Harris. Uh, uh, just, you guys can see, this is our learning uh, points. We have A, B, C until N. Okay, let's start with the next, with the first one, the scarcity effect. So before we start, I would just want to, uh, ensure you guys you already understand about cognitive bias. So cognitive bias is a systematic error uh, in thinking that occurs when people are processing and interpreting information in the world around them. So it's actually a daily phenomenon. We, we, we experience this every day, but sometimes we don't realize it happens, okay? So it's, it's something natural, but uh, in a way that it's actually a fault. It's actually a systematic error. And in e-commerce, in e we actually use this cognitive bias, not all of them because there are a lot of cognitive bias, but there are some of cognitive bias that actually useful for e-commerce. So that's what, I will I will share I will share you guys today. Okay, move on to the scarcity effect. Okay, a scarcity effect uh, is actually when people place a higher value on an object that is scarce and a lower value on on the one that is available in abundance. So we actually appreciate something that is less than something that is more. So our brand associates scarcity with something positive, luxurious, and exclusive. Uh, that's why we kind of appreciate limited edition better than regular edition. So uh, how this is, can be applied in Lazada, we have four scenarios. Next screen. Okay, the stock scarcity. Okay, uh, by displaying low stock availability, people can be urged to purchase more due to, due to the fear of missing out. So when I research this, I think Lazada can also apply this uh, cognitive bias on the platform uh, by highlighting the stock when it's below 10 units maybe, or you, you guys can decide. And also with the seller, with urging copy or visual effect that makes people aware of the low stock. So uh, 
most of the time when the stock is low, we cannot, we do not highlight it. While it's actually maybe useful if we can highlight it because people value uh, scarcity more. So yeah, that's that's the idea. Um, you you guys can maybe uh, apply on Lazada. Next is stock. Oh, sorry. This one is double uh, title. So it's actually, yeah. So the next one is actually where uh, people are encouraged to make purchases as the product will seem to be availability scarce compared to other products. Lazada can apply this by creating campaign that only available. So this is actually platform scarcity. So it's not scarcity, but a platform scarcity. Sorry for the mistype. Uh, Lazada can apply this by creating campaign that only available on certain platform. For example, we only create campaign that available uh, only on app or maybe only on the mobile version just to increase the download for that platform. Because sometimes we actually, because I have a lot of uh, uh, projects so far and I realized that sometimes we actually do not make them scarce. We actually provide every uh, every uh, platform for the projects. So it's not only available on app, but this research actually shows that if we make it scarce, people may download certain platform because of that promo only. Next, cart time scarcity. So Lazada can limit the cart time because uh, if we can do it, uh, we can encourage the customers to find to finish the purchase. So just like you guys can see on the screen, uh, they have uh, I found this a uh, few times uh, years ago. So the copy is actually said, OMG, you left some items in your cart, still want them? Get them before they're gone. So we kind of uh, limit the time on the cart. We can also apply this strategy to the wish list, especially their wish list is somehow scarce. Move on to the next one, free offering with scarcity. <clears throat> okay, for this part, Lazada can create free offering with constraints for shopping features or service that have less engagement. You guys can uh, decide which services that has less engagement and we can offer free offering with constraint there. So it's not only free offering, but free offering with scarcity. Okay, next is framing effect. So what is framing effect? Uh, is when one same information is framed as a gain or as a loss. If we can do this framing, we can get two different behaviors from the customers. This bias called as framing effect. So why this bias is important for us? Because by understanding the framing, we can be more influential and persuasive. We can also break down the messaging uh, of competitors and people promoting or flipping viewpoints. We have five uh, scenarios for this uh, framing effect. Next. The first one is gain framing. Uh, I think this one is applied many times in Lazada. So it's actually something we meet every day. It's like a discount, cashback, rewards. But take a note that game frame campaign is more persuasive than lost frame messages when outcome is clear and obvious. So this particular uh, framing, game framing, is actually something that can be applied to products that actually have a clear outcome for, for TV, for sofa, for something that is a solid product. Next, 
while loss framing is actually uh, uh, suitable for a product or service that leads that leads to a more uncertain outcome. Yeah, for example, like services, security, something like that. So it's not something uh, real. It's there, but it's not there. Uh, so Lazada can apply this bias when promoting its services, security system, other features to address the consumer's anxiety towards uncertain outcome. Next, we have temporal framing. So people actually cannot stand delay gratification. Most of them will choose immediate smaller rewards compared to the long-term rewards. So uh, instead of making big or annual rewards that is, for example, being uh, decided the winner on the end of the year, we prefer need, uh, we need to give more immediate rewards compared to long running rewards. This is more likable than the long one. Next, we have the value framing. So most people will respond to information more if it is framed as affecting something the value in life. Uh, I think Lazada can create campaign and address the benefit for the ones who are valued to the target buyers. So it's not the buyers itself, but the one they love, the one they value in life. For example, their spouse, their children, their parents, etc. The next one is goal framing. Most people will respond to certain info when it is framed as helping or hindering the attempt to improve their circumstances. Lazada can address certain campaign by highlighting the value and its benefit to help buyers' goals in their life. Okay. Uh, next, we have anchor effect. What is anchor effect? This is quite interesting, and maybe some of the examples will not be applicable uh, for Lazada at this moment because I have seen some design that actually not pretty much like this, but maybe you guys can consider it in the future. So what is anchor effect? It's a bias that relies on the first piece of information received when making decisions. So according to psychologists, uh, people have tendency to rely too heavily on the very first piece of information they learn, which can have a serious impact on the, on the decision they end up making. So we have four scenarios for anchor effect. Next, uh, the multiple unit anchor. So instead of giving price per unit, uh, multiple unit pricing can make people get anchored at the first sight. Why? Because this kind of format makes people think it's a discount. So Lazada can apply this within a campaign by creating multiple unit pricing offers. Uh, so next, I'm sorry guys if I'm going too fast because we have a lot, but the, but the time is not. So let's get going. The second anchor will be the first price anchor. Uh, this is what I mentioned before because I've seen this kind of uh, layout on Shopee. And this is what I think is a first price anchor. So the uh, first price anchor is actually uh, applies when, for example, a seller set the first price high and then explain all the values. So when the customers actually hear all the explanations within the first price and will think any lower price would do, this is when the seller come for the second price. So Lazada can apply this by placing the first place uh, sorry, the first price on the left because people uh, read from the left and cross it out 
then place on the second price, which is lower. But the design now is actually not like this, I know. But uh, just for consideration, actually Shopee do this. The next one is bestseller anchor. So have you guys ever seen uh, an online store, the owner highlighting some of the best selling products on the top? So this actually a bestseller anchor. So this anchor uh, will uh, kind of set the buyer's mind, wishing there are similar offers with lower price. So after this anchor, the, the user will scroll down and expect, hey, if we can find similar offer with all of price, that will be good, something like that. Okay, the next one is order limit anchor. Uh, by limiting how many a product can be bought per customer, people will remember their limit quantity and begin assuming other buyers buy the product in higher numbers. So yeah, Lazada can apply this by providing maximum order quantity for sellers so they can choose to limit the order quantity for their products. Okay, move on to the herd mentality effect. What is this? It's kind of, it sounds so uh, science, but it's actually something happens around us. So what is herd mentality effect? So people are largely influenced by emotion and instinct rather than their own independent analysis. So when their social acts mostly the same toward one information, they will likely do the same. Uh, we can apply this uh, effect in two scenarios. The first one would be bandwagon mentality. This is only an example. Maybe you can apply it or maybe you cannot. But yeah, this is, uh, I expect this can be can, can inspire uh, all of us. The bandwagon mentality is uh, by creating advertising that showcases high sales achieved by the product as well as popularity graphs. So this attracts new customers and helps in achieving higher sales because sometimes people confirm uh, whether the platform is okay or not based on numbers. So if we have that number, and we can show them the numbers. It will also it, it, it can be it can affect new customers to join Lazada. A simple uh, yeah something like that. The next one is uh, something we seen before. I I use this uh, phenomenon to to explain the in group effort mentality. So if a product is chosen by the close friends or of an individual, they are more likely to go for it rather than following a person out of their group. So in order to exploit this, Lazada can promote products based on groups or regions or even community base, just like what McDonald's did with BTS Mill. So they are targeting the fans of BTS by using BTS. Next is compromise effect. Now, uh, this is also something we've seen a lot. Uh, maybe you guys not realize this, but this will explain why we usually have three options or three packets, something like that. So it's called compromise effect. A product will have a higher chance to be purchased for, from a product choice set when it's compared to extreme offers. So for example, we have three uh, package. Uh, usually the one that we sell is, the, is in the middle one, while on the, on the left, on, uh, on the, uh, the other option will be extreme offers. One is too small and one is too, too big. So people will consider the middle one as the uh, proper one. So a compromise effect dictates that the decision maker chooses a middle options over an extreme one 
given a set of choice alternatives, then choosing uh, an intermediate option is easier to justify. So people, uh, we, we kind of set the people to choose the intermediate one instead of go for the smaller one or the bigger ones. Next, how to apply? Yeah, this is something we may see a lot before. Okay, move on to the endowed progress effect. What is this? So endowed progress effect is the idea to give closer to goal illusion for the customers. So they would be more likely to persist and reach the goal. How to apply this? Next. Uh, so Lazada can create loyalty card with offer like buy 10 and get one free. However, the loyalty card has been stamped twice already, uh, leaving them with only eight stamps to fill. So the customers are more likely to complete a goal if they are provided with artificial advancement toward that goal. So instead of providing, hey, you need to fill eight uh, stamp, uh we we can create an illusion that they already got two stamps but they still have eight more to go so yeah this is actually quite interesting the next one is Peltzman effect so Peltzman effect um can be explained by uh security reasons. So people are more likely to engage in a risky behavior when the security measures have been mandated. Uh, so this bias taken from some salesman postulation about mandating the use of seat belts in automobiles. He, he theorized that the introduction of safety device like seat belts or airbags more likely to make people less careful in streets. So people are driving less careful when they are using seat belts or if their car has airbags because they think they are safe. So if we want people to be less careful with our promotion, our offer, we should give them safety. What kind of safety? It actually depends on the product itself. Uh, next, how this to apply? We can uh, we can sample next Netflix. So people are uh, uh, people are careful nowadays if they offer by this kind of promo, watch free for fifty days because most people are. For, getting they are actually subscribed and did not realize when the second month is entering. So they already subscribed, but they forgot to unsubscribe. So they need to pay on the second month while they actually do not have uh, that intention. So to, to avoid this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of event, Netflix provide copy that actually uh, give the safety feeling to the customers by saying, we'll email you a reminder three days before your trial ends. Cancel anytime before 6-2 and you won't be charged. So by this copy, by this copy actually gives the safety to the customer. So they won't feel cheated if the services uh, enter the second month because they already uh, noticed before and they actually realize, hey, this is a fair game. So it's not a cheat game. Next, we have availability heuristic effect. So this, uh, this effect uh, describes a mental shortcut when people make decisions based on emotional cues, favorite facts, and vivid image that leave an easily recalled impression in our mind. 
So why this is important? Because when making decision, certain memories or knowledge jump out to replace the complicated task of calculating statistics. Some memories leave a lasting impression because they connect to emotional triggers. Yeah, because uh, for example, when we have this uh, car uh, plane crash, uh, the tickets will will definitely go down at that point and uh, for maybe days after. But after that, people will forget and start uh, taking flight again. So. Well, this explains why we need to work with the local team because they already know what happens in their local and it might affect the users. Uh, next, for example, lottery tickets is also uh, something we kind of, um, uh, we, we can make it as an example. When people buying tickets for lottery because they think quickly about those who have won lottery before, while the probability of winning is a complex calculation. So it's not only a bad, uh, bad memories, it's also good memories. So people can make decision by jumping into certain situation or memories they think when they see that kind of promo. So Lazada can use what's happening in the world, local countries, or on, on the news when creating campaigns. Lazada also can use certain memorable incidents to boost up the value of its campaign. Next is choice supportive effect. So what is choice supportive effect? People tend to over attribute positive features to options there chose and negative features to options not chosen. So majority of our decisions are made by our subconscious brain. As a result, people don't have full access to why they have more, why they make most decisions. So recent studies have shown that positive aspects of the choice tend to be recalled as part of decision process, but negative aspects tend to be associated with the rejected options. So how to apply this uh, effect? It's kind, it sounds so uh, difficult, but it's actually not. So Lazada can encourage customers after the purchase by telling, hey, it's a good decision. Uh, or even better, if can deliver some of the reasons. So we are not only make the uh, congratulations, copy, but we also explain why it's congratulations. So it, this will make customers feeling positive, cherish this uh, good aspect of the shopping and tend to ignore the flow. So I think this can be applied on our shopping experience in Lazada. Okay, next, Ben Franklin effect. What is Ben Franklin effect? So a person who already performed a favor for another person is more likely to do another favor for other than if they had received a favor from that person. This is referred as Ben Franklin effect. So this effect explains why people can end up having strong engagement with certain platform when they start it from small engagement. So. Lazada can take example from Bosley that uh, start the uh, engagement with a small price uh, by only uh, mm -hmm. less than one dollar for a single song. So it's not start with the big numbers, small with the small numbers. Next is this example. As you can see, they start with a small engagement and will increase in the future slowly as they already engage to the platform. So it's an experience. The users need to experience by themselves, but we kind of allow them start with low, uh, low numbers first. Next is rhyme as reason effect. 
what is rhyme as reason effect? So more uh, people more likely re to remember, repeat, and believe statement that contain a rhyme compared to those that do not. So this bias is important to understand because its ability to help people engage with our offers, especially when the offers has catchy rhyme. So yeah, I think Lazada can apply this on uh, our uh, copy uh, products uh, or when they just kick off uh, certain uh, services. Lazada can use rhyme on the product descriptions, product titles, on-site banners. For example, Spark box. Next, on the second slide, on the next slide. So Spark box uses rhyme to reinforce trust in, in the quality of items within each monthly shipment. Yeah, our pack has your bag. Next is hello effect. So what is hello effect? Hello effect is a type of cognitive bias in which our overall impression influences how we feel and think towards something. So this cognitive bias explains why customers develop bias toward certain products because the positive experience with other products made by the same company. So this apply on one of the famous uh, example is actually iPod. So next uh, slide. So in 2005, Apple bombarded the world with iPod commercials. The iPod was everywhere. And if you didn't own one, you feel like you were outdated. Uh, after the 2005 iPod push, uh, Apple fiscal year sales increased 38% and the profits by 384%. What makes it interesting? Uh, iPod and iTunes only contributed for 39% of the sales. So by focusing its marketing through the popular and market-dominated iPod, people clearly consider Apple as a technology leader and innovator. So around 61% is the sales coming from other products because people already think Apple as a technology leader and innovator. So Lazada maybe can also focus its commercial on best aspect of Lazada. For example, app or its high quality profile as an online shopping platform, its easiness, payment protection, etc. You guys can uh, decide it. So yeah, this is something maybe you can apply also in the future. Next is horn effect. What is horn effect? So horn effect is where the brain make a snap judgment with one trait. It's simply the opposite of hello effect. If the hello effect would be the positive one, the horn effect will be the negative one. This usually happens when something or famous brand do mistakes and people will consider that mistake as a whole quality of the product of the same brand. So this is kind of scary. Uh, in 2000, sorry, in 1920, psychologist Edward L. Fondyke discovered that the first impression of someone dictates how their future actions are seen. So her effect is making assumptions about someone based on very little information or judging someone or uh, and attributing qualities to them based on one known trait. For example, if someone is late, people automatically think the person is lazy. Well, it's not always the case, right? So they use a very little information to, to make assumption and to judge overall quality. Yeah, next is pick rule effect. 
So I find this also interesting because uh, it maybe uh, relates more to our to Lazada because this effect disregard the total sum or average of the experience and focus forces us to judge an experience based on how we felt at its peak and its end. So it's not the whole experience. It's just the peak experience. So when they expect, when they experience the peak at the best, they will use that as uh, the, the whole, they will, they will think it as a whole experience. So why this is important, uh, in the past, Kahneman and Ziv Karman conducted a study to explore the pick and roll. They found that participants who were very dissatisfied during most of the experience, but were satisfied in the last few seconds, described the experience as positive. So we may not uh, make a good experience on several parts of our platforms, but we need somehow to ensure the peak experience, maybe check out or something related to payment is, should be the best experience. For example, shopping peak will likely be checkout process, right? Try to make it as seamless as possible. Don't ask for more information that people need. Do not, don't require a login, allow a digital wallet to use. So we ensure that the peak experience is as seamless, as seamless as possible. So yeah, I also experienced this before uh, on certain e-commerce in Indonesia <laughs> when I having difficulties on the checkout. And after that, I just don't want to use that uh, e-commerce anymore because I having difficulties on the checkout. So yeah, it's actually, I can relate to this uh, effect better because I experienced it myself. Okay, that's all. Um, hi, Asa. Any yeah. questions from anyone? Otherwise, I have a question. Uh, out of all these effects uh, from the ads which you have seen in the past, you know, one, one and a half years that you are already with us about, I think, two years, uh, which ones um, would you say Lazada already applies? Or no, which mm. of these does Lazada already apply? And which ones would you say, would you recommend the most for Lazada in Lazada's context? Or even you apply when it comes to UX writing? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I do not, uh, I don't take care of all copies, so I do not know which one is already apply on the project but uh, if you ask me about which one we should apply I think that it's the anchor one so can you go back to anchor effect on the uh, slide 19 slide 19 so yeah I have seen this one on Shopee and I actually asked the team to check it out on the group but I do not know if the team check them out or not. But uh, I think this is something uh, interesting because they put the original price at first and then cross it out and put the new price after it. And at the, at the end of the uh, offering, at the end of the price, we have this uh, percent, how much they can sell. So this is, uh, I actually, I uh, recommend to use, but I realized this is not also, easy. Right? Lazada also uses, just that our, I think the main price is before and the previous price is at the later. If I'm not wrong, we already use this, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason uh, um, is, I think, on the call as well. Um, we already use this as part of our product types, right? As far as I remember, the the uh, the final price actually starts, and after that, below that number. Oh yes, correct. For us, that yeah, that's what I'm saying. For us, it's uh, okay. Yeah. So this is okay. 
Okay. Uh, I think uh, that would be my answer. I, I forgot your second question, Ms. Sajita. So uh, anything which you have used from this for, you know, the copyright or UX writing, any either you or maybe even Sajita oh, yeah. or mm -hmm. any of the UX writers. Yeah, I think I've used the Peltzman effect before because when a certain project come uh, came to me, I ensure that ev uh, the customers know everything about the uh, about the services, about the product. Because when we launch a new product, people can be uh, can be unfamiliar with the service, and this unfamiliar thing would scare them. If they do not know the service, if they do not know the details, they kind of feel don't want to use it, don't want to try it. So uh, I remember I in, uh, insisted the team to explain this and that because I think that's important and to give a, gar a guarantee to, to, to certain thing that makes the users more comfortable uh, to try the services, yeah. And I think uh, safety is the, the, the first thing to ensure when we do copies, because uh, I rem I've read before, uh, actually uh, safety is the first reason why people uh, engage more to a product. So other than other, uh, other than uh, other, uh, you know, effects, safety is the, is the first one. Thanks, Asa. Any questions from anyone else? I think one other, um, how do I say, maybe an effect that I've seen. I just saw it on Amazon. Um, somebody shared it um, in a forum. Was um, when you're browsing through a product, it shows how many people bought it mm. uh, the previous day. Like, you know, like say, for example, it's toilet paper or yeah. a beauty product. It shows like 5,000 people bought it yesterday or, you know, 10,000 plus people yeah. bought it yesterday. So when you see, oh, wow, so many people bought it. I think it's linked to one of your effects, right? Yes. Um, yeah, they, mentality. Yeah, mentality yeah, yeah. So you're like, oh, wow, this, this product is so popular um, and it makes them uh, click. I think it was done to improve the click-through rate, uh, CTR, um, and, and then finally buy the product. Um, I don't know if Lazada has it, but I did see on some products, it does show X number of products sold. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. we have that. And also, uh, the trend. I think we have it more like top uh, things, so top uh, products, which is selling in that category. And Amazon has it more like trending trend yeah. uh, trending and bestsellers so those are what amazon has um and uh, yeah so this is the herd mentality effect so uh, trending and bestsellers is something which amazon has those two categories as well yeah yeah even if i know it's a cognitive bias i still use it when i shop so every time i want to buy something i just need to see how many people buy it and put comments on it so yeah it's it's something we know it's a cognitive bias, but the, the, we still use it as our uh, decision making. Yeah. yeah. Also, the other one is the one which travel agencies use a lot, that these many people are also viewing this hotel at this point mm. of time. So that is more like the first uh, effect which you have, which is more like the FOMO, that fear of missing out kind of. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And anyone? More questions? Okay, we, uh, if there's no other questions, then we uh, end the session now and we will be sharing uh, this ses uh, the recording of this session and also this PPT. Uh, I think this PPT is already shared, if I'm not wrong, uh, in the group. I will share it again. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I do some editing on this okay, one. So, we share, yeah. We share the new one then. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, thanks, thanks, Asa, for taking us through. And okay. Thank you, everyone for having me today. Thank you, Asa.